Did Twitter get hacked? IT admins, careful when you delete files, and the IRS is back online. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for June 14, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, our privacy, and our internet freedom. If you are a current Patreon of ThreatWire, thank you. You are helping fund the production of this show and our goal of managing an RSS. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place for that. Now on to the news. First off, stop freaking out, everybody. Just stop. Everyone don't freak out. Late last week, there was news that surfaced that Twitter may or may not have been hacked and over 32 million usernames and passwords were exposed in a searchable database at leakedsource.com. I'm a little skeptical about the whole Twitter got hacked headline, though. There's a few reasons for that. So the data was being sold on the dark web by a user named Tessa88, and leaked source suspects that the usernames, passwords, and email addresses associated with this claim were compiled by using malware that infected browsers like Firefox and Chrome. Users would save their passwords and usernames in Firefox or Chrome, yada, 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 malware, yay. So Twitter and some cybersecurity professionals do not think that malware is at fault here or is not the main problem, but using the same password across multiple sites is. In this case, a person could use the data from previous hacks such as LinkedIn or MySpace and cross compile that with Twitter data of users that were using the same password across both sites, and thereby they have 32 million usernames and passwords of people on Twitter from those other hacks. Now in a tweet as well as a blog post, Twitter says that the usernames and passwords, quote, may have been amassed from combining information from other recent breaches, malware on victims' machines that are stealing passwords for all sites, or a combination of both. Now, Twitter holds strongly that their own servers were not hacked and that they use HTTPS and bcrypt for encryption of the passwords. Twitter also cross-references the data from other hacks and other leaks to protect their own users. They'll lock down any kind of accounts that they deem need extra protection if they find leaked information that may also pertain to a user on their own social network. So while chances are pretty high that Twitter did not actually get hacked, using a strong password, two-factor authentication, and a different password on every single site is still really, really highly suggested. Just do it. A 37-year-old systems administrator was convicted guilty of violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, or CFAA, last week and faces up to 10 years in jail along with up to a quarter million dollars in payments for deleting files off of, get this, an employee's server before leaving a job at an auto dealer software firm. So the actions taken by the defendant, his name is Michael Thomas, were deemed damaging by the employer, and he was charged with unauthorized damages. Now Thomas disabled the company's VPN for a period of time, he tampered with the error alert system, and he also deleted a bunch of files which were on a backup, which by the way, were also backed up. So they didn't actually lose anything in that case, they just had to go back and find them. So while the actions were harmful in motive, a couple of IT employees got laid off a bit before he actually went in and deleted those files. There was no evidence during the trial showing that Thomas wasn't authorized, as in the company didn't have official documents or policies detailing what their system's admin could or could not do. So opponents of this outcome think that this could have been settled in a civil court, and he should simply pay money for the damages, not actually get jail time, and that this will be a precedent for future outcomes. You get in a spat with your employer, you delete some files, become a felon under the broad CFAA law. So I am kind of curious what your take on this one is. Did he deserve the conviction? Let me know in a comment below. Following the 2015 hack of the IRS Get Transcript service, the agency took down the site for over a year. Now, Get Transcript is available again with more authentication. Users are now required to have a social security number along with all the historical data about themselves, an email, a phone number, as well as a credit card or a loan number with your name on the account. And an email or a text will be used to send a verification code to the user before they can log in. Users will also be able to see the date and time their transcript was last accessed. Now the tax transcripts are used by US citizens as proof of income for mortgages and for loans, and they can also be used to look up adjusted gross income for e-filing. The IRS is also planning to deploy six-digit PIN codes for taxpayers later on this year year, not quite yet because of 
go figure, security concerns. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon and everyone who is considering so. If you find value from this and you want to spare a few cents per episode, please do consider becoming a Patreon, a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable little cats and dogs like these ones in our next episode because they are so, so cute. I love checking them out every single week. They're adorable and they bring so much joy to my heart. So thank you for sending those in. I hope you will contribute to help us keep the show coming completely independent and completely ad free. Yeah, I know some people say Patreon is an ad, but it's the way that we get support. So thank you. It's the one way that we're keeping this show online. Of course, if you cannot donate, you can also share, you can also like, you can subscribe on YouTube all of that goes a very, very long way as well to get the word out there because we think the show is important and I'm really grateful that a lot of you do too. You can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. And we just got a new website going up and running. So check it out, threatwire.net. And with that, I am Shanna Morse and I will see you on the internet.